It's a chilly but beautiful morning. The leaves on the walnut tree are just starting to change colour. And the sun is peering through the evergreen trees. And the pond is flooded. <laughs> very green and very flooded. You got your Christmas jumper on my bum bun! Have you got your Christmas jumper on? Mummy, it's not a Christmas jumper, it's just an autumn jumper. It's actually cashmere. Charlie got the doggies their very first um, autumn winter 2023 jumpers. These are little Abercrombie jumpers. Are they Abercrombie? Yeah. Yes, they look so smart and it's so soft. Dexie's looking so smart in his little jumper. Are you posing, Dexie, next to the Arga? This is my favorite place to relax on an autumn morning. It's so toasty. Good morning, my darlings, and welcome to a new vlog. I think this vlog is just gonna be the loveliest, cozy November Cotswold weekend. We have got Charlie's sister Scarlett and her boyfriend Zach staying with us this weekend and we're just gonna do the most wholesome lovely things this weekend. So very much looking forward to bringing you along for all of that goodness. We're heading out very shortly for a walk. Charlie is coming to like the end of his flu and we don't want him to get worse so we're just going for a short walk some fresh air we're going to walk to the local um golf club that does really lovely sausage and bacon butties so that's going to be perfect it's a gorgeous day like crisp blue skies the trees are all glowing with that low is it winter yet or is it still autumn that autumn winter sunshine and it's as though someone has just sprinkled a little bit of festivity into the air very much starting to feel it. I did ask Alexa to play classical Christmas songs this morning. We're getting there, we are getting there. So I'm dressed nice and cozy for the walk. I've just popped on a cashmere jumper. Somebody asked me on Instagram the other day what my favorite affordable high street cashmere brand was. And I have got to say, every time it is Abercrombie. Abercrombie have got a really gorgeous selection of very classic cashmere pieces. I particularly am fond of the neckline on this one. It's not a roll neck. I think you call it mock turtleneck? I don't know. But it's so soft and warm and cashmere is just the best at keeping you temperature regulated and gorgeous. This is just a simple, plain grey and I love it. I've accessorised it with my favourite sparkly bits. I've got a few new bits from... Astrid and Muse Gleam collection, which is their kind of festive collection, all about adding sparkle, whether to a party outfit or simply to a casual knit and a barber jacket for a dog walk. But these little hoops, I just think, are the perfect everyday sparkle. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? Yes, I said the C word. Thinking about Christmas a lot at the moment. And I feel like these are just going to be my little everyday, everyday nod to something sparkly. As you're watching this, Astrid and Mew will be in their cyber sale. Hallelujah. 25% off so many amazing pieces. A couple of exclusions. I'll leave the details for that link down below. But I believe all the pieces that I'm wearing from my sparkling bezel it's kind of like a tennis bracelet just so elegant and timeless my ring collection necklaces that you can stack up so many gorgeous bits i'll show you a few more a little bit later i'm also going to be layering up for our cozy walk i got this scarf also from abercrombie and fitch um and the dog jumpers Ooh, when you're watching this oh we love cyber week um when you're watching this you will have access to 20% off. Let me just fact check that. 25% off, oh my goodness. And an extra 15% off with code AFJOSIE. So many of my favorite retailers offer a little extra discount code just for my audience, which is so generous. And um, all of these like extra bonus codes and an edit of our favorite pieces will be on the Black Friday hub on the vlog. So do check that out. Um, but yes, AF Josie for an extra 15% off. If you're not an Abercrombie and Fitch member, might be worth signing up if you're watching this video the day that it goes live to get that early access because the best pieces will go. But yes, cozy scarf 
gorgeous sparkling jewelry to just add that little perfect finishing touch and I am gonna have to wear sunglasses because it's that glorious low autumn winter sunshine. So my darlings, I'll show you a little bit more, um, a few more favorites later on, but for now, I need my sausage body. <laughs> <laughs> need to get my sausage dogs in their Christmas jumpers and let's head over to Felden for a nice crisp autumn winter morning walk and a weekend brunch. My darling mother just texted me saying that she was going to make a beauty pie order and what should she add to her basket so I thought I would just quickly show you um, <laughs> what I've told her especially as as you are watching this I've got a £20 off code, which I believe is Josie BF, Josie BF for Black Friday, which I'll leave on the screen here, £20 off when you spend over £60. That, I believe, is for new members only, so a really nice um, introduction if you haven't shopped at Beauty Pie before, a really good deal, and you guys know how much I love them, and these products are amazing. I would recommend literally all of these and so many more, but um, just if you need a little bit of inspo and that code is what you need to <laughs> tip you over the edge, this is one of my favorite Christmas scents of all time. I hope it's still in stock. It's the Fur Balsam Sandalwood and Sweet Orange. Not only do I love the green smoked um, frosted candle, but it's so long lasting and it really does make your entire house smell festive, but not in a kind of tacky way, it's just gorgeous. But yeah, it does sell out, so I hope it's still left. Vitamin C capsules are expensive. Um, Beauty Pie ones are not. And I use vitamin C every single day. This is actually vitamin C and vitamin E. I always recommend these to my mother. So, Lala, these are the ones to add to your basket. Do you know what? If you want to get your hands on some really good vitamin C, just add a load of these to your basket until you spend £60. Um, they don't go out of date. Well, I mean, I'd probably use them within like three years, but pretty good. And then use the code. If you are looking for stocking fillers, to be honest, all of this would be amazing for stocking fillers, but for husbands, wives, girlfriends, brothers, literally everyone, these are the Bamford Dupe <laughs> bath oils, and they're amazing, and they smell they smell expensive. Bath oils, they can get wildly expensive. I think this is really good value and I love how it smells. Best body lotion in the world. Love it. It's got hibiscus, um, hibiscus flower oil droplets within it. It just makes your skin glow and I love it. A couple of makeup favourites. They're collagen lip oils. I couldn't find my nudia one, which is my number one favourite. Um, but this is literally the Charlotte Tilbury lip oil but far more affordable collagen plumping also amazing little stocking filler their under eye concealer i love so i recommended that to lilla and then random one and not glamorous or exciting to talk about but their foot cream is absolutely amazing charlie and i both use this every night super softening foot and heel cream yeah so these are just a few of my favorites but this is really such an amazing opportunity to get such a good price on Beauty Pie, so Josie BF, and that will get you £20 off when you spend £60. I'll leave all the info down below. Um, yeah, just thought I would recommend these few little select pieces. Fully wrapped up and ready to go. I'm going to take my gloves with me because it is chilly. I can see my breath outside, but it's a gorgeous morning. Let's go. In case anybody wanted to see the results of the tree that I was getting very upset over the other day, this is how it currently looks. They're taking it down further, are they? Finish, yeah. Oh wow. So they'll bring everything down to where the ivy is. Right. So I think it will look like quite a nice structure. It looks quite monstrous right now. And it will come back to life. It's still alive. Oh. <laughs>
Auntie Scarlett is doing our bath time. We're really, really <laughs> upset right now. <laughs> so, Auntie Scarlett, would you like to cradle this in your arms? We'll present you the child. We let him go. We deliver it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's draw you, Dexy. No, can we be a little burrito for Auntie Scarlet? <laughs> my darlings we have just got back from our lovely walk and um, the doggies have had their baths they are now absolutely exhausted and everyone is snuggled up downstairs in the living room watching a film so I thought I would just sneak up and um, catch up with you guys I have made everyone a chaga chai and it is just the perfect pick-me-up mmm absolutely delicious I use the Jeeves and Jericho chai syrup which is a really nice local company and then a teaspoon of my chaga mushroom powder for a little bit of an energy boost so arrived home and mr postman has been and this is a little delivery from christian dior beauty i thought i would open this up together i've realized that the day that you're watching this is actually the day before my birthday so i'm gonna say that this is a little early birthday treat and I just thought the bag even just the bag itself is so beautiful so let's have a little sneak peek inside I'm guessing this is going to be their Christmas beauty collection <laughs> so first of all I think this is actually just a lipstick case it says fashion lipstick on it if this lipstick case is the same pattern as this bag that is going to be <gasps> it is oh my gosh how stunning is that oh my goodness i wonder if they do like little gifts in this range like little makeup bags or things like that that would be so lovely couture color gel effect shine and wear protective nail care in the shade mirror is this going to be like a ooh they are clearly going for the gold and the sparkles for their theme this year. I'm actually getting my nails done on Tuesday. So now would be a good time to experiment and just like put a layer of this over my gel because they're starting to grow out. So that could be quite fun. And then what's this? Black Rivoli. Actually, you could do... Ooh, that's a nice toe colour. It's not black. It's more like a really deep purpley plum. That is... Do you know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna put this on my fingers. I think that could be quite a fun and festive colour. This sounds rather lovely. Hydrating floral lip care. I can't decide if that's a balm or a lipstick, but it's the most beautiful kind of brownie pink. I purposely didn't top up my makeup before chatting to you because I knew I'd want to try some of this. The lighting in here at the moment is so crazy I can't actually tell at all <laughs> what that looks like but it feels super balmy and comfortable. That's going straight in my handbag. So I wonder if I could just put this in the fancy new case. Yes, how perfect. So now I have got this sensationally jazzy lip balm that's gonna go in my handbag. Yay. Now this is called a long wear creamy powder palette. Oh my goodness. Such stunning shades. I feel like you could create the most beautiful, festive eye look with these. And finally, their blush, which is apparently infused with floral skincare. That is such a gorgeous colour. I actually did not put any blush on today, so let's do a little top up. I just love the pattern embossed on this. 
I always think it's kind of a shame that they put these brushes in here. It's a bit of a waste because you never actually get that good a colour payoff. I feel like it just puts the colour on and then wipes it away again. But I can see that this is a really beautiful shade. I'm going to take this upstairs and apply it with a proper brush. Can you see? It just kind of goes on a little bit patchy with these brushes. A little bit pointless. Ooh, and that lip balm colour. <gasps> that is rather gorgeous. I'm back again, and I thought I'd blended out my blusher thoroughly, but actually it still looks a little bit um, prominent. But actually, I don't really mind it. And I've put on what I call my lip filler <laughs> lipstick, because... Whenever I wear this, I always get comments being like, Josie, when are you going to tell us about your lip filler? And I'm like, no, no, it's Charlotte Tilbury. I can't actually remember the exact shade. It's just the one that I keep in my everyday makeup box, but I'll leave it linked down below. So as I mentioned earlier, and yeah, I've just used the GHD Rise, and it's just so quick, and it just adds a really nice bit of movement to my hair. It will drop, but um, I thought I would show you some of the bits that I got in my latest Abercrombie order, seeing as we've got the Black Friday cyber discounts on now. I mean, even Dexter and Dickens are wearing their Abercrombie cashmere jumpers this morning. If you're looking for like a really cute, but not tacky, and also good quality dog knit like if you really want to keep your dog warm during the winter and you want them to look cute and cozy and festive then those little Abercrombie dog jumpers are so adorable I have to thank Charlie for that do you know what? I'm probably gonna actually ask Charlie to share with you later on in the video some of his Abercrombie favorites because he's been wearing so much from Abercrombie lately and I feel like if you're looking for some really nice clothing ideas for a boyfriend or a husband then Charlie's probably got some great recommendations but before I try on the new bits let's do a little Little jewelry switch up because I want to share with you more of my favorite Astrid and Mew pieces because of their incredible 25% off. So I've just added a little matching bracelet and um, necklace combo and I'm really hoping actually that you can buy these by themselves because I actually got mine from my advent calendar. It's just the most delicate little twinkling addition to the bracelet and what I absolutely adore about Astrid and Mew is the ability to stack up their pieces whether it's the rings I've got four and I could definitely do even more rings on this hand I love in particular these ones as I mentioned a million times and then these this one is part of the glimmer collection this one I got in my advent calendar I need to sort out this hand um yeah I showed you that one earlier didn't I love them and as much as I just adore these tiny little hoops as my everyday let's let's go large it's like that potion that Alice in Wonderland drinks because I've actually got something very similar to these just bigger these are also part of Astrid and Mew's gleam collection for Christmas so sparkling so gorgeous and again a really nice way of elevating very plain knitwear so many of my most worn everyday jewellery pieces are from Astrid and Mew, so be sure to check out the little edit that we'll have done down below, um, and I'll leave all of my favourite bits linked down there, particularly the rings and the slightly chunkier version of these, like they're a smaller hoop but they're chunkier, and I, I would say they're one of my most worn earrings of all time. This I've had for over a year now, um, and it's still one of my favourites from them. This ring, and again they stack up so beautifully just love them. So now that we have got the gorgeous sparkling pieces on and you'll find links to all of these down below of course, let's switch up the knit. Well actually I've got a couple of bits and I'm going to pop on top of this for 10 out of 10 cozy vibes. So this was the first fleece that I added to my basket, brand new, I've still got the labels on and I can see myself using this um, kind of like a jacket. So getting myself to Pilates, going to the gym, that kind of thing. Um, and also nipping out the house to run errands, going to the going to the farm shop, that kind of thing. I just saw it online and I was like, that looks like the coziest thing in the entire world. And oh my gosh, it genuinely is. Look at this. <gasps> so it is overall kind of like a sheepy, sherpery finish, really big oversized collar. You've got this kind of light taupe, faux leather trim detail on here and on the zip line 
would you call this like a bomber style jacket? I'm never really too sure on the classification what makes a bomber jacket, but I feel like this probably could classify as one. The leggings are Adenola. At the time of filming, I don't know what their Cyber Week sales will be, but I think they did do some pretty good ones last year. So that will be also on the Cyber Week hub on the blog, but it's all about the cozy knit and I absolutely love this. The cashmere jumper that I've been wearing today has been absolutely perfect. It's kept me at the absolute perfect temperature and a really nice layering piece. Layering my cozy knits, layering my gorgeous jewelry. That is what this time of year is all about. I've just read on the label of this one, quality since 1892. 1892 Abercrombie and Fitch is over 130 years old that is absolutely crazy so this next one I cannot even begin to tell you how soft this fabric is like you know those insanely soft blankets you can get your hands on sorry the lighting I know is just absolutely bonkers it's like that and I I mean I feel like a stock record but again this is just perfect for throwing on top of your gym kit to get yourself to the gym get yourself to yoga to pilates I'm <laughs> do you know what I thought of or who I thought of when I first saw this I can imagine Freddie's sister Coco wearing this to dance college that was such a niche like person to random solution for someone wearing this but I can I can totally see Coco wearing one of these it's just the nicest color it's like a blonde teddy bear oh my gosh that softness around my face is just heavenly and I just love the elegance that these earrings add to the look it's just such a perfect finishing touch this again is kind of like a teddy bear bomber it feels a little bit more relaxed because it's got the ribbed detail um, around the sleeves and down at the bottom there but again just such a cute like mum doing the school run I love how I've been using that analogy a lot more lately it's because I had we had our friends Hannah and Cal over a couple of weekends ago and she was telling me about like what she wears when she's taking little Leo out into the park and like picking him up from nursery and she wants to be like cozy but also I mean imagine hugging your child wearing something like this they would just think that you were a human teddy bear so big fan of this and then it's 20% off which is really exciting okay what do I have Ooh. The next is a jumper dress and I think it might just become my favourite and we are going out for dinner tonight at the Fox at Oddington which is one of our favourites. Um, do you know what I really need to do is my blog post on Cotswold best pubs in this area because I get so many questions. Um, but yeah we're going to the Fox later tonight so I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up wearing this dress. Woo! Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the collar in this last piece to share with you. And this is not an oversized knit. This is actually a knitted dress, which is just perfection. It's it's just the perfect knit dress. The colour I think is absolutely gorgeous. It's a really nice, light, kind of creamy, very frothy cappuccino kind of colour. Again, just so elevated with the beautiful jewellery. Never underestimate what a dainty little bracelet can do. Um, to a look. I just think this is so pretty. I'm sure there are, have a little look on the Astronomy website because they've got so many dainty little bracelets. I just absolutely adore how these look. It really just kind of elevates, elevates a wrist stack. I feel like they do dainty sparkly pieces just so so well and you know, sorry i've got like fluff from this jumper dress in my eyelashes i feel like if you've got if you or someone that you're gifting for has got multiple piercings they are absolutely the brand to go to amazing stocking fillers amazing main christmas gifts treats for yourself so yeah now's the time now is the time if you i mean these are i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but these are giving Cartier. <laughs> they are giving Cartier. I like how it looks with two stacked up. You could put like a Parve um, diamond ring in the middle if you really want to. That would be so nice. Anyway, I was distracted. I meant to be talking about this gorgeous dress. So it is the perfect knit dress, super cozy, just a really simple silhouette. You've got a really big cozy neckline. I'm gonna have to move ya. I love autumn sunshine but it's really challenging <laughs> when it comes to actually showing you stuff. The length is really lovely. Excuse the fact that I'm wearing my little socks right now. The colour is just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I feel like I maybe do need to wear my skims with this. As you can see on this side we do have a very very sensual 
slipped up one leg, which is quite sexy if I do say so myself. My little cashmere socks, not quite so sexy, but I'll wear some nice boots with this later. I just think the colour of this is really, really versatile and it looks gorgeous and just so cosy paired with the scarf that I was wearing earlier. What can you see in the corner of the camera? What is that? Oh, <laughs> literally the desk that you're sitting on. We've got a festive Christmas quiz at Soho Farmhouse next week and I think that this might just be the perfect outfit to wear. I love combining cosy textures and um, light colours. I think it's such an elegant way of doing layering in autumn and Abercrombie have just got the perfect fits for that. I think this scarf could be a really lovely stocking fuller as well. Just crisp, white, super fluffy, super cosy. So yeah, those are my favourites. That's all the bits that I got in my latest order. You'll probably remember some of the bits that I shared with you recently. The gorgeous high neck cable knit jumper I wore in the vlog before last. It's currently in the wash. Um, they just have the most beautiful knitwear. So make the most of the Abercrombie sale because they've really stepped up their game. I was talking um, to, I think it was Freddie and Leonora about Abercrombie. And we were just saying their pieces, like they've really swooped in and got price, quality and style, they've got that absolutely nailed. So yeah, I'll leave all of these pieces, of course, linked down below. Now, as I mentioned, um, Scarlett, Zach and Charlie are chilling downstairs, watching something on the TV. I've noticed that we've got some overripe bananas in the fridge, so I think I might do a little bit of research and see if I can find a kind of festive twist on a banana bread, because on a cosy autumn afternoon, that is exactly what I feel like baking. Okay, my darlings, we're down in the kitchen, and this this is not going to be a disaster because I've got Scarlettina here to help me, who is chief <laughs> banana bread baker. Mm. Was this a lockdown home skill? I think it was. It's, it? We're really lucky. I think when you have an aga, they make, in my opinion, they make the best banana bread. So I think they do too. Yeah. So just, you found this recipe? Well, no, actually, I think if you do have an aga, I'm sure you already know this, but mm. a top tip is just to search for aga recipes. Oh. So it's just buy the aga brand I guess they've okay. got like a cookbook mum has one that she had from like the 70s so oh, wow. it's very old <laughs> oh my goodness okay so, yeah. well I'm sous chef so um what do we do first cool so you cream the butter and the sugar as you would do with most cake recipes okay is that with a whisk <laughs> yeah you can do it with a spoon no I do it with a spoon a creaming's spoon. more yeah you're not like whipping it up you're more just like combining smooshing it together exactly okay we need to weigh these ingredients perfect right let's do it cool butter how much butter so, it is 115 grams of butter, mm -hmm. softened. Should I put it in the microwave to soften? I would, I wouldn't. No? Just Maybe it... for literally like five seconds, because the last thing you want is when you cream butter and sugar, is it for, for it to be really melted. Okay. So you want the butter to be softened, but not like, you know, like oily. Liquid. Oil, yeah. Okay, 150 grams. 115 and then the same amount of sugar, so 115 of sugar. 115, 115. Yeah. Okay, let's weigh our own ingredients and then we'll start blitzing. Perfect. Yay. Okay, we are back and we have weighed out butter and we've put um, the butter in the agar for a few moments to soften. And I realized we didn't actually explain what we're making. So we're doing a gingerbread banana loaf because it's Christmas. It is Christmas. Nearly. It is the... Yeah, it is the season. It is the season. So what are you doing? So I'm creaming the butter and the sugar. By smushing it all together. By smushing it all together. If you have like a, you know, if you have a KitchenAid or something, you can do it in the KitchenAid. Okay. Is it too hard? No, no, no. It's actually okay. It's okay? I'd rather the butter was a bit harder than it was too soft. Okay. But, um, no, I was just saying to Jose, the reason why banana breads are so great is because you don't have to ice them. Yes, that's so, true. I just think sometimes you bake a cake and then you have to ice it and it's just a whole faff. It's too much. It's too much faff. I'm, and I'm too thought, lazy. Yeah, I'm too lazy. And I think that ruins it sometimes. Mm. And it is like the unhealthy bit, but the yummy bit. But yeah. I said to Scarlett, we've got our pumpkin butter ice cream in the freezer. So did you make that? I did, yeah. Wow. I'm basically just like adding different things to my vanilla ice cream mix. And nice. it's really yummy. Are we using all these two bananas, by the way? Yes. yes. So two bananas and you mash them just with a fork. Okie dokie. Um, I shall. Which is nice. And the key with banana bread is that you bake it really low and slow. Low and slow. So in the argy, you use the bottom, the warming drawer. Oh. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. 
for like an hour and a bit, probably an hour and a half. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it depends how hot your agar is, obviously. Yeah. And then you finish it on the top for about five, ten minutes. I have become so lazy when it comes to baking because I literally just make everything in a the thermomix. I'm not used to doing any of this. Oh, really? I mean, we could do it in a the thermomix. Well, that's not very fun for the vlog. No. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, Josie, that recipe looks delicious, but I don't have a thermomix, so how <laughs> Yeah, do exactly, do I don't have a thermomix. Do you use your KitchenAid a lot? Well, we had one at home when I lived at home, but now I'm in London, I don't. I don't so have one. do you still bake? Uh, I rarely bake. Really? Very obsessive. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. But that's just no, I do. Life, isn't it? It's true, you realise how privileged you are to have time. a KitchenAid, yeah. or time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah. A KitchenAid and time. Yeah. <laughs> Two I've made a life. few exactly. I've made a few um carrot cakes. You do a great carrot cake. Thank you. You do like a carrot and walnut, or is it carrot and pecan? Carrot and pecan, which Ooh. is actually what I got out. We could do walnut. I don't know if oh, do you not want to include that. Can we stick walnuts in it? Yeah. 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 I just think always gingerbread and walnut carrot cake. Mm. Yay! What next? So I believe I can do this by by memory. You add an egg, but I will just check. Yeah, mix in the mashed banana and egg until even. So actually, we do need another bowl. I'll crack this into this bowl and and just whip it up with a fork. Okay. Perfect. Ooh. I was about to say we don't need to warm up the agar. No. Yeah, the dream. Took me so long to get used to having an oven and not an agar. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> like, just the process of having to actually think ahead. Yeah. So how smushy do I get the banana? That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Yeah. I shall stop. All good. And that's probably enough of that. Mm -hmm. That in there? These both in here, yeah. In the bigger one? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you do that. You sure? Yeah. Do you not know? No, you do <laughs> I don't trust myself. With I feel baking. like I'm on Blue Peter. You're good at baking. You're experimental. Well, at least you try my baking creations. I always Charlie's do. like, uh, yeah, I don't really fancy <laughs> pumpkin in my. Uh... But you're experimental with your flavors. I'm boring. I just make the same recipe over and over again. Well, have you ever done a gingerbread version of your banana? No, bread? I haven't. Here we go. I'm nervous. Does it need mixing? Yes. Any such thing as over mixing at this stage? Um. Oh, to be honest, yes. If it says in the recipe mix until combined, or this one says mix mashed banana and egg, egg until even, that just means mix it till it's combined, pretty much. Okay. So often when it says mix until fluffy, that means make it like aerated, so you have to mix for a long time. Okay. Because you, if you, the more you mix, the more the air gets in. So that's okay. probably fine. This is enough. Yeah. Okay. So yes, the answer is yes. You can over mix, okay. which is the joy of baking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next, we just fold in the dry ingredients. So that's the okay. flour. Yeah. I think we do half. I'll give you the ingredients soon. Uh, they give you the weight soon. Do you use both wholemeal flour and self-raising? I think a lot of recipes you can just use self-raising if you don't have wholemeal. Okay. But wholemeal flour almost gives it that slightly, you know, when you have a banana bread and it tastes a little bit like brown bread, mm. like that wheaty flavor, which I love. Love that. So 85 grams of wholemeal flour and 115, again, of self-raising. So 115 is the key number in this recipe. 115. 115 one, okay. and then 85. I shall BRB with the flour. Perfect. Lawyer. 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 <laughs> do you want, want to do one do one do I'll either. I, is, does it work with both? Yeah. Okay. Well, shall I just make them a bit smaller? Yeah. Well, would, would you, would you rather have four nuts there? I think pecans. Yeah. Because they're a bit more festive, aren't nice. they? Nice. A handful or more? 55 grams. Oh. I guess you can do, basically with the pecans or the walnuts, you can do as many as you want. Okay. Should we do two handfuls? Whatever you think. Because all this, it's not gonna, at least they're not gonna add any moisture, so. Won't affect the bake. Yes, so okay. the key obviously with baking is you don't want to add too much moisture, so the bananas will add the moisture. Okay. So you can't do two, like more than two bananas. This is but. what confuses me about recipes, because it's like two bananas. Well, is that like a Dalesford banana, oh, which size. is this big, yeah. or is it like a Tesco banana, which is this big? I know, it can be confusing. Yeah. But I find that with cooking as well. I find cooking's more forgiving. Yeah, maybe. Baking okay. is not. Right, I will add this and combine. I don't want them to be completely smithery. No, agreed. Whatever you think. You can throw them in here as well. And then to be honest, we should be done almost. Yeah. Whoa. It's really quick, actually, this recipe. And what about the spices? Is that just to our taste? Yes, so I this recipe doesn't, because it's an agar one, it's just a plain banana bread. Okay. So this is our experiment. <laughs> so, yeah, I just go for what you think. Any salt? 
Not this recipe. Interesting. No. I love cinnamon, do you? Yes. Should we do like a big heap yeah, teaspoon? Yeah, whatever you think. I'm gonna do like, whoa. Cool. Mm. And no, Hopefully oh, we that's did enough. Sugar, didn't we? We've done sugar, we've done eggs, we've done banana. Whoops, my hand fell. Baking powder, <laughs> yeah, perfect. And then you know what, you can always make, I know I said you can't, you don't need to ice it, but you can always make just with some icing sugar and water, mm. and then you could add some cinnamon in, Agreed. and you can like drizzle it, Ooh, or pour that. it on top, yeah. So gingerbread, this is, this is ground ginger. So let's do two teaspoons of that cool. to make it gingery. Yeah. And then I'm gonna grate a nutmeg over the top. Cool. That is looking good. Yay! Smells good. It smells Ow. like Christmas. It does. Fab. Okay. And to be honest, generally banana bread, the batter is quite dry. Like it looks quite dry right now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll see. Maybe next time if we do one again. Mm -hmm. If it is a bit too dry, we could take out a tiny bit of flour, mm -hmm. and then obviously it's substituted with all the with all the spices. But could you add in like a <coughs> dash of maple syrup? Yeah, maybe. Mm. 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 We'll put it on top. Mm. Oh yeah, and we're right. gonna have this with ice cream as well. So very sweet. And then mm -hmm. that's it. Easy. Yeah, okay. and then in a tin, and we'll then low and tent. slow. It just takes a while. That's all right. Yeah, it says fifty to sixty minutes in the cast oven. Cast oven. So that's the um, that's the lowest one. I think that's that's like a heating oven. Okay. Should I just dollop it in? Yeah. Yay. Oh, I like these liners. Yeah, they're just from Amazon. That's great. Super easy. Makes life easier. Yeah. That's what we want. Smells amazing. Okay. Low and slow. Right now. Low and slow. Yeah. I think let's put it in for fifty. Sorry, I'm running this up. That's right. Put it in for, uh, let's, I think, let's check on it after 50 minutes. Okay, so, so it's in the baking tin. As per Skazwan's instructions, 50 minutes. And then we'll check on it. Good luck, my little friend. I just licked the fork and it's really good. Ooh. Good luck. Goodbye. Yeah. Right, Alexa, set timer for 50 minutes. I just love it because it's so far. Okay, the ultimate cozy afternoon yeah. is in action. We've got the Charnwood lit, Charlie's got the rugby on, and we're just about to play a game of Cotswold Monopoly. You might remember if you watched Vlogmas last year, <laughs> as modelled by Dexy, oops, that Charlie spent a lot of time and effort creating this game for us last year, and it is completely personalised. So, for example, we have got the likes of Josie's Greenhouse, our house, our local pub, our local butcher's pad farm as places that you can buy amongst many others i think dalesford and soho farmhouse are on here somewhere yeah dalesford organic the wild rabbit the fox at oddington we've got kingham station etc etc but the best bit of this game is actually the chance cards and the community chest so we've got things like tractor repairs um we've got advanced straw top cottage you have been elected chairman of Dexter's Investment Fund. Pay each player £50. And the running theme is that any time you win money, it's something to do with Dexter. But any time you have got like a fine, oh, I love this one. You sell your homegrown veg at the village fair, collect £150. And you know, the irony is that when I sold, well, when I entered my veg at the village fair, I got, I think, £3.75 in prize winnings. You did really well. To be fair, I think your flowers were well, look what's up there, darling. That is my Dahlia trophy. That is my my homegrown trophy. But yeah, these are just fantastic. I really want to show you a Dickens one because they're so funny. <laughs> How long did this take you to make, darling? Fair few hours. Fair few hours. Advanced to time Oxfordshire. And a lot of people asked where you got it made, so we'll have to leave that link down below. Oh, here we go. Dickens has made a banking error in your favour. <laughs> Collect £200. It's just hilarious. So, Scarlett, Zachary and I are going to play while Charlie watches Quinns versus Lester. Oh, Charlie next is Lemsit. Oh, my poor husband. Oh, my fifth Lemsit today, which... I don't know if I'm going to get cancelled for saying that because I think I've overdosed. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can get cancelled for overdosing you can't, on lemon. Well, you can get cancelled for everything these days, can't you? But I yeah. think overdosing on paracetamol is probably the least, least of all. Least those, scandalous. But, yeah, the least scandalous thing. But yeah, mm. Lemsit. Do you know what though? I tried the route of natural remedies. Yeah. So the first day I did lemon, ginger, lemon and ginger tea, kombucha. Yeah. Loads of natural remedies. Yeah, but you know what you didn't have? 
my vegetable I'll broth. Some vegetable broth. Well, it's no surprise that I'm not ill, darling, and I'm the one that's been eating lots of veggie broth. Anyway, let's get cracking with Cotswold Monopoly. Chelsea's vegetable broth that tastes like dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> Tense negotiations are happening. Scarlett, what are you trying to buy? Well, Zach would like my pink one. What is it's it? Straw top cottage three. Straw top three? That's He's got one yeah, and two. I've okay. Got the other straw top cottages, and I'm offering the taste of country. Ooh, straw yeah. top's way better. Yeah, exactly. So, so you tell him. Like, like <laughs> so I asked for his station as well, but he said yeah, no. Yeah, I'm not, because that gives you like yeah. two sets nearly. Well, I'm um, not Do you want one though. of these ones? Oh, the Fox at Arlington. <laughs> That's quite expensive though. Okay, well, don't give it to me then. What could you give me? A hundred as well. I'll do it. Taste of country and a hundred pounds, that's, that's a good deal. Considering Actually, what you no, paid for it. Yeah, 200, and then I, 200. No, I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> give you 120. Meanwhile, I've bought my greenhouse, <laughs> I've bought the presbytery, I've got Quince and Clover, the old rectory, and the George. Mm. Not got a huge amount of cash. The notes have got Dexter and Dickens faces on them. No, I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> Leave it for now. Ooh. <laughs> Tense negotiation. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> My luck is finally in. Dexter's Bitcoin investment has matured and I get to receive 500 pounds. Nice. Wow. wow. Look at that. See, I knew that having a child investor would come in useful. Thanks, Dexy. Oh, that's mine. That'll be 28 pounds for visiting my greenhouse. Houses all over Chapel Lane on the straw top cottages. Oh no, oh, no indeed, because Scarlett and I have both just landed on straw top one and we've both just had to pay Zach £450. That's crazy. I'm sad. Me too. <laughs> Taking another quick break from the game, and here we have got our gingerbread banana loaf and my homemade pumpkin and vanilla ice cream. This looks absolutely sensational. I'm excited to give it a try. Ooh, here we go. Thank you. Yummerillo. Big number. Ooh. What did you get? Two. Oh no. Can I have uh, eight, please? Scarlett is this game's Lady Bamford. She's got houses on the Fox at Oddington, the Wild Rabbit, and Ellsford. Are you in jail? Uh oh. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we're having to call it a night. We've got a reigning champion. Do you want to explain your strategy? My strategy is to lose and almost quit and yeah. then come back from the dead. That's, I don't know how it happens, but... That's like a life lesson, you know? Yeah, you didn't give up. Is. You could have, You were at the bottom and you did not give up. I did almost. We encouraged you. We were like, no, Scarlett, don't give up. You didn't, and now you're the winner. Now look. So what's in your property empire? What do you well, own? Well, actually, to be honest, I, no one's bought the coach house yet. I know. So it's I think the only had we thing kept left. playing, I'm actually, I'm not sure that I would have won, but. But you own the entirety of um, Kingham. Yeah. So I'm Lady Banbury. Banford. Sorry. <laughs> Lady Banbury. Can you cut that out? <laughs> she will be livid. What else do you I'm own? I'm Lady Banford currently, as I've yeah. got Dalesford and the Fox. Yeah. Uh, the Bell at Langford, Time, all Time. Oh, you literally Bell own. And <coughs> Josie's greenhouse. You own oh my god! In in real life, if you actually owned Dalesford Wild Rabbit, the Bell, the Fox, 
you would be worth about 100 million pounds in real life. No, more, right? You would be the queen of the concert. It's a shame I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, not, how did you do? I did all right. I have most of the stations and the infrastructure is the most important bit. That's Ooh. true. Oh, That's yeah. true. That, yeah, fair enough. What, what village is this? The pink? No, I got the, the three straw top cottages, which okay. are pretty, yeah. pretty integral, yeah. I think. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, if nice. you control the water, you control everything. Yeah, I control yeah. the electricity. Well, there you go. Safe. You're <laughs> basically... AI. <laughs> what would you rather control? Water or electricity? Probably electricity. Water? People can't survive without water. They can survive without I electricity. Wow. Well. Oh. And I definitely came last, but I do own most of Great Chew, the Yurt at Nicholson, Soho Farmhouse, and Quince and Clover. And in my opinion, most importantly, I do still own my own home, the old rectory. So all is not lost, but hats off to the winner, the reigning champion. Well played, Scarlett. I'll see you at Christmas. Rematch at Christmas. Rematch at Vlogmas. Yay! Well, my darlings, I can't pretend not to be very disappointed for coming last at the Cotswold Monopoly, but I'm excited for the Christmas rematch. Excuse me? Anyway, um, another delivery that arrived today. Today's been a great delivery day. My new iPhone. I ordered this, um, I can't remember, I think like two months ago in London, and I thought I'd just share with you an unboxing in case anyone's interested. So I don't know if this is still accurate, but um, my favourite fact about iPhone boxes that I learnt, I think I actually learnt it from a podcast, I've, and sorry to my old viewers who have heard me go on about this so many times, my original viewers, but I have always been really interested in customer psychology, it's actually something that I did my dissertation on, on the things that retailers do, the little tricks that they play on us to make us spend more money and buy more. One of the things, one of my absolute favourite facts is the mat that they put on the floor and the blowers that they blow down on you when you enter a shop. You think as a customer that that is for your own comfort, it's actually not, it's actually to make you realise that you're in a new environment more quickly because there's an area as you enter a shop which is called the decompression zone and in that space your mind is still walking down the pavement you haven't quite registered yet that you're in a shop and retailers want to reduce that decompression zone because they essentially are wasting <sighs> space by putting any products in that area because we're not mentally aware that we're in a shop so what retailers do is they put the mats on the floor and they blow air on you to make your brain more quickly realise that you're in a new environment, therefore reducing that decompression zone and therefore being able to make the most of their shop space and put more merchandise closer to the door. That's a fun little fact. So many little snippets like that that I just find so fascinating. And one, and Apple throw most of these rules out the window. So Apple stores, there'll be no mat, no air blown on you. In fact, if anything, they try to copy the surroundings that they're in. So think about the Covent Garden Apple store. It's got the same flagstones on the floor as the Covent Garden Piazza, there's actually trees inside, there's big glass walls and that is because Apple products they want to be considered as so integrated into our lives that you don't realise you're in a shop at all. They do so many interesting psychological things. Another thing that they do is to do with the boxes and let me know down below if you've actually kept all of your old iPhone, iMac, iPad boxes and that's because they've designed them in a way that we become like emotionally attached to our Apple boxes. And one of the ways that they do that is by making the time that it takes you to open your iPhone box the perfect amount of time between anticipation and frustration. So this action here, that took me maybe like 2.8 seconds. That time has actually got shorter over the time that Apple have been creating iPhones. And that is because our, poor Charlie coughing. That is because our, what's the word? Attention span has got shorter. So the original Apple boxes, it took you like four seconds to do that vacuum. It was like, because Apple realized that that exact, like to the millisecond amount of time that it takes you to undo an iPhone box is the exact perfect balance between anticipation and frustration. So you're excited, excited, excited. You're just about to start getting frustrated and that is when the lid comes off. Like how crazy is that? Anyway, <laughs> major digression, new iPhone, what even is this? 15 Pro Max, I think. Um, it's literally the same as my old iPhone, but 
with all these psychological tricks that they play on you, we all just are guilty of always wanting to buy the new iPhone. Um, yeah, I mean, it literally looks identical, although I swear it's not rose gold. It's quite boring looking. Is it silver? How boring. Freddie warned me against this, but I didn't think she was um, correct. It feels like it's still got a plastic casing on it. Yeah, it's just quite boring. I'm definitely gonna um, buy a new case for this. I literally don't know what the difference is between this and my old phone, but I am able to put it down as a work expense. So I treated myself the own. Ooh, that is the only difference. It is the new Thunderbolt. Thunder, USB-C. You don't even get a plug. You just get a wire. Ridiculous. So I'm gonna leave this charging um, and then while we're at dinner, I'll probably just do the whole switch over. If I can get Wi-Fi in the pub, we are heading over to the Fox at Oddington. Um, let's choose my country. It does feel quite nice. Like it's a little bit softer, slightly more rounded edges than my old phone. But other than that, it's literally the same. So there we go. That was an exciting unboxing. Right, I am going to get ready for dinner. I think I'm gonna literally stay in my nice Abercrombie dress, maybe switch up my jewelry, although I do absolutely love these pieces. But I will pop a tiny bit more makeup on because it's all melted. Oh, it wants to do a quick start from my old iPhone. Very clever. Right, I'll let it do its thing while I go and pop on my makeup. We've arrived at the Fox. We're gonna try some of their seasonal cocktails. I'm getting a bustle in the hedgerow. Sounds delish. It's now Sunday morning. We had a delightful dinner at the Fox last night. It's always just really buzzy in there, really good atmosphere. And we bumped into three separate couples, um, well actually two couples and one group of ladies that were visiting not just the Fox, but the entirety of the Cotswolds, thanks to these vlogs. Um, by some magic, through sharing our lives here in the Cotswolds, we often meet people that um, are inspired to choose the Cotswolds as their holiday destination or their little break. Um, the lady that I chatted to the most, she was a lovely lady, lady named Natasha and she'd come all the way from Virginia to do a few nights in the Cotswolds with some girlfriends. Um, and yeah, we chatted for a little while at the Fox while we were waiting for our tables for dinner and it's just always so lovely to meet so many familiar faces. And we were saying, um, that it is kind of likely that in the places that we talk about the most, like Dalesford, Farmhouse, um, <clears throat> Bamford, The Fox, <laughs> Checkers at Churchill, you know, all of our favourite haunts, I guess it's quite likely that we're going to bump into people at those places. It's not like a random pub in the UK because we're creatures of habit, but it's always so lovely to meet um, friendly faces and meet the people that actually watch the videos because I spend my entire life talking to a camera that's this big and sometimes forget, well not forget but like, you know, it's it's sometimes, you, it's not that easy to visualise the actual people watching the videos. So if you ever see me toodling about, <laughs> please do say hello because I just love meeting you guys. Anyway, so we had a scrumptious meal and we're gonna have some more scrumptious meals today. Charlie is currently cooking and the whole house smells amazing. He's starting to feel a little bit better. It's been like 10 days of man flu. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's starting to feel better and he's doing his posh baked beans, which is such a nutritious breakfast. It's so delicious with fried eggs and my mouth is already watering. <laughs> um, so he's cooking that. And then we're going to Soho Farmhouse for a roast a little bit later. It's gonna have to be quite a bit later because this is quite a filling breakfast. Um, so because it's a chilled Sunday, I've just got on one of my older Abercrombie knits, actually. I've got this exact knit in three different colours, brown, green, and cream, and I love them. They are a mock turtleneck, which I find just really easy. They wash really well. This must have been through the wash 
a million times because I garden in it and they're just really easy to throw on jumpers and I find them very elegant hair pulled back into a little bun and I've actually gone quite cool with my earrings today <laughs> at least I think so these I mentioned them yesterday are actually my like all-time favorite Astrid and Mew hoops can you see um because they're like a chunky little hoop with the parve diamonds and then I've tried to be even cooler and popped a little huggy in so that's adorable kept it minimal with the rings but I will add more when we go out to the farmhouse later I think when you're watching this um I think Black Friday is tomorrow is that right I think it is yeah I think Black Friday is tomorrow um and yet this is actually my last of the kind of like cyber deal sharing vlogs so maybe on sunday should i do a the best of cyber or are you done with cyber by now <laughs> it's not even happened yet and are we are we like bamboozled by black friday leave the hashtag bamboozled by black friday <laughs> down below if it's just all too much but i hope that everything that i've shared has been useful i've tried to really like just share the products that either I have or are on my wish list or things that I know that you guys will love and brands that I adore and it's just hard not to when the deals are so good and you know perfect timing before Christmas but anyway I'm rambling so I'm just trying to kill time until Charlie finishes breakfast. <laughs> Scarlett and Zach have been in the gym which is very commendable I have not <laughs> I've got my leggings on but that's as close to the gym as we've got this morning but um yeah I'm gonna go and see if Charlie needs any more help I'll lay the table and then it's time for brunch. Hydrangea update that nobody asked for that you're gonna get anyway so these are the ones that I put in here probably about a month ago now and I let you know that I was going to be just trimming the bottom of them about a centimeter every few days and I did that for about two weeks um, and then as soon as they get crispy you can just stop with the maintenance and they just stay looking like this for eternity now which is great um, so yeah that's like a really great I mean it's not the most affordable because hydrangeas are not that cheap but it's a lot more affordable than having fresh flowers all the time and we're not gonna be getting fresh flowers over the over the rest of um, are we in winter yet or is it still autumn i don't know over the rest of the cold months there won't be any fresh flowers until like may which is quite a tragic thought at least not ones that i can grow so yeah i guess this is what we're going to be looking at for the next few months okay charlie's letting me try the baked beans this is a monumentous moment Just go careful put your hand on here yeah? okay so they're basically what kind of beans did you use, darling? Uh, they're just like a white bean. I think they're called cannelli cannellini beans. Okay. Or butter beans, or both, I don't know. And then proper canned tomatoes. Yeah, so you've got tinned cherry tomatoes, which I like. So you get the mm. actual little cherry tomatoes in there. Yeah. Tomato puree, garlic, onion, paprika, fresh chilli, a um, bit of red wine vinegar. Mm. Do you know what? At Soho Farmhouse, when I went with Lilla that time, they yeah. did um, posh baked beans. And they did like melted cheese on top of it as well. Yeah, I'm gonna put the feta around. Oh! Yeah. Lovely. Can you please explain what's going on here? Um, this is Zach. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we are playing um, Witch Dog. What was it called? The blind. We call it the blindfold game, but it's a game where you get blindfolded and you are presented with the body part of a, one of the dogs, and you have to guess which one the dog, which dog it is. We could call it deciding dachshund. <laughs> deciding dachshund. Yeah, I like that. Switching sausages. <laughs> um, are you ready to play, Zach? I'm ready to play, yeah. Can you see? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. So you hold a hand out and we'll present a part and you've got to tell which dog it is, okay? Yeah. What body part are you in this? Uh, hmm. That's enough. Is that Dickens? No! No! Oh, <laughs> What body part was that? <laughs> that was the same. Oh, okay, alright. That was what I was hoping. <laughs> okay. That's Dexter. Yes! Yeah! Nice. <laughs> 
him in a long time. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's hard. I don't know. <laughs> uh, is that one Dexter as well? No! no. Rubbish. So wait, he's got... You've got two wrong... One out of three, yeah. One out of three. Okay, this is your chance. Wait, how does he win or lose? This is best of five. Best, best of five, five, best yeah. Of five. So okay. you need to get the next two correct, Zach, okay? Right. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm second guessing everything here. Was was that one Dexter? No! No! Rubbish! <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> this, this one will get you I'm going to put an entire dog on your lap. Okay. You've got to guess this correctly. Right. You can smell them as well. Oh, that'll make it easy. <laughs> it's the ears. Okay, that's that's definitely uh, Dickens. Yay! Yeah! Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, it's gone blurry. But I think most of that was in shot. Yeah. <laughs> well, well done. You do not uh, <laughs> decide sausage. What did we call it? No. Deciphering dachshunds. <laughs> Deciphering dachshunds. Think... All right, Scott, yeah, your two turn. Out of five. Your turn. Great. Scott, one. If I don't do as well as you. <laughs> to be fair, the ones that we did before we started filming, he did better. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my hair it's going. very intense. Okay, are you ready? Yes. To decipher Daxons. Okay, hands up. Dexter. Yes! <laughs> That's easy. The balls are the easiest. <laughs> Dickens. Yes! You're good at this. <laughs> 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 That was Dexter, by the way. <laughs> hold, your, hold your hand out to the side. Yeah, lift, lift your left hand up. <laughs> Is that Dickens? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Was that his tongue? No, it was his schnizzle. <laughs> kept on licking me. The schnid. Did he lick me? I'm crying. <laughs> That's... Uh, Dexter? No! No! You got three... I mean, you've already won best out of five because you've got three right Oh, great. Right. <laughs> okay, is this the bonus round? Entire dog Yeah, on okay, lap? bonus round. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh yeah, he's fully out. Well, Willy, Willy's out. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, is this easy? What are those paws? This is my lean. That's lean! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's the paws! The paws. paws are the giveaway. You did very well. And the children are very confused. They just yeah. fully out the way. Oh my god! Why is this money so out? We put it down. I think, I so think that was in frame all, all the game as well. Oh no! So that is our new game, deciphering Jacksons. Another day, another walk that I really don't want to go on. Come on. <laughs> Come on, my slow sausage. <laughs> We've just got back from another rather drizzly dog walk. I got a little bit soaked through, <laughs> so I've had to change into a, a clean, dry net. Um, but darlings, we are gonna head to Soho Farmhouse very shortly, and I won't be filming much of anything there, so I thought I would just bid you farewell and say thank you so much for watching this long, wholesome family vlog. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And yeah, I think this is my last cyber vlog so i'd love to know what you guys have found and let me know your best cyber purchase and it would really mean the world to me if you share 
our Black Friday hub with your friends, with your family. Send it as a little, little gift list suggestion because we have spent a lot of time on it. Um, so yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed all of the edits and everything and there'll be more on my Instagram and on my LTK. But I'm sat up in the office. I'm just gonna finish off a little bit of editing um, for today's video. And yeah, that's all from me. So darlings, thank you for watching. I will see you very soon in the next one.